Well, welcome to another edition of Pancreas School. I'm Dr. Doug Evans, and today uh, I plan to talk about uh, pancreatic cancer staging. Why uh, we stage the disease is because treatment is based on the stage that the, of disease that the patient has, and the excitement and hope uh, that we have in oncology today. And uh, uh, it's just an uh, amazing revolution in new therapies, uh, in new treatments, and why we're so encouraged uh, for our patients and their families. So I'm gonna start with uh, staging, and as you know from, if, you, if you've watched other editions of Pancreas School, I always start with the anatomy, because you can never get enough uh, of human anatomy, and it's important to know all about this. So, um, as you remember, the stomach is here, pancreas is here, We'll put the liver here, gallbladder there, and then the gallbladder leads to the bile duct, which comes right down be behind the first portion of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. And then this joins with the pancreatic duct to end in the ampulla, which drains uh, into the small intestine so that when you eat, Digestive enzymes from the pancreas and the bile merge with your food and help you digest your food. Um, and then in the chest, we have the left lung, uh, we have the right lung, and I'll just put the heart up here. Um, and so probably the only thing that the world agrees on is the staging of cancer. It's fascinating. It's, it's probably the only thing the world agrees on. And in general, um, and remember that the stages are one, two, three, and four. And I'm gonna oversimplify this because the staging has gotten very complicated in a number of other uh, solid uh, tumors. Pancreas cancer is still relatively simple. And stage four disease means that the primary tumor and I'll put a, a primary tumor in here, so we'll put our tumor in black. That primary tumor, for example, has, um, has gone to the liver or it's gone to the lung. So that would be stage four disease, where it's uh, metastasized to another part of the, of the body. So I would put here metastasized to, for example, liver or lung, a couple of the favorite areas for pancreas cancer to go. Um, st typically stage three disease means that it's locally advanced. In other words, it's, it's a little bit too big or borderline too big to remove, but it's still in the pancreas. And stage one and two are localized And, uh, and clearly operable. Because of the, uh, of the challenge in knowing what, which tumor in the pancreas is, uh, is operable or able to be removed by the surgeon, and which tumor in the pancreas is not, there's been a tremendous amount of work done um, over the past couple decades Looking at, um, looking at these stages of disease and trying to refine them in a way that is more meaningful for patients and more meaningful for doctors so that everyone can understand the goals of therapy. Obviously, if the cancer has spread to the liver or to the lungs, we would not consider surgery on the primary tumor. Pancreas cancer, unlike a couple other types of cancers, Oftentimes, uh, tumors of the, of the ovary or occasionally of the fallopian tube, um, occasionally neuroendocrine tumors, you can treat them a, a little bit like a snow pile. You can try to keep that snow pile down and the patient will live longer. With adenocarcinoma of the pancreas, the common type of pancreas cancer uh, that affects uh, patients uh, throughout the world, uh, you can't treat it as a snow pile. Surgery tends to only be effective if you can remove all the cancer cells. 
um, not just 90%, 95% of the cancer cells. So knowing whether or not the tumor is operable is very important. And I'm going to um, I'm going to kind of erase a part of this anatomy here. I'll maybe leave uh, the liver in place just to try to explain this a little bit better because this this can become very confusing. Um, of, of huge interest to us at the Medical College of Wisconsin is defining these three categories of operable or removable pancreas cancer to a much greater degree. And what we and others around the country have used as terminology is resectable, borderline resectable, and then locally advanced. So for example, we would classify resectable tumors based upon their size as stages one and two, and borderline resectable and locally advanced tumors in stage three. Some experts in the field would put borderline resectable tumors into stage two. I don't think that, I don't think that really matters. Uh, under the uh, leadership of Kathleen Christians, one of the senior surgeons here at the Medical College of Wisconsin, we have divided locally advanced into A and into B. And in general, these categories reflect the relationship of the tumor to adjacent blood vessels. And I think um, uh, in uh, one of my earlier editions of pancreas school, I went over the importance of how the tumor relates to the arteries and the veins adjacent to the pancreas. And that, base, and that determines the categorization of resectable, borderline resectable, and locally advanced. So in general, resectable tumors, they may, uh, they may touch the blood vessels. Borderline resectables usually abut them. This is what we call abutment of the tumor to the arteries. If the tumor, uh, on the other hand, involves the artery to a greater degree, we would call that encasement. So you can see here abutment is where it's inseparable from approximately half of the circumference or the, di or the surrounding of the vessel. If on the other hand, the blood vessel looks like this, then we would call, we would call that uh, encasement. So borderline resectables, resectable tumors, typically the tumor uh, abuts the blood vessels. For locally advanced tumors, they typically encase the blood vessels. And, uh, and dealing with these blood vessels has been a huge uh, interest of ours here at the Medical College of Wisconsin. And importantly, in general, um, we're able to remove tumors that are resectable, borderline resectable, and locally advanced type A. It is less common that we would be able to remove tumors that are locally advanced type B. As you know from a, a prior edition of Pancreas School, we typically treat patients first with chemotherapy uh, for a, typically anywhere from two to four months, more frequently four months. We then evolve to radiation therapy. And then we follow radiation with surgery. Importantly, and this is important for all of you who, who are either undergoing treatment or you have a family member who is undergoing treatment, we always make a definitive decision as to whether the tumor is operable before we start the radiation phase. Um, one thing that we try to, to do here at MCW is, is provide clarity and assistance with regard to the exact staging 
and the technical uh, ability of surgeons, to, uh, of our surgeons to remove the tumor. So we would typically have, uh, have a definitive opinion about the stage of disease at the time of diagnosis before we start chemotherapy. Uh, obviously, we hope that the tumor gets a little smaller. Even if the tumor gets a little smaller with chemotherapy and with radiation therapy, it's unusual that the relationship of the tumor to the blood vessels change. And therefore, it's unusual that we would need to alter the operative plan from what it was at the time of diagnosis. Most importantly, um, we make a definitive uh, uh, decision with regard to whether or not surgery is on the table or off the table before we start radiation therapy. So once we have delivered um, uh, all of the chemotherapy that we think uh, is helpful uh, at this time after diagnosis, whether it be four months, which is our conventional uh, duration, or maybe even six months for a patient with a locally advanced type A or type B tumor, we make a definitive decision as to, the, uh, as to whether or not we are planning surgery before we start the radiation therapy. And remember, uh, the decision to proceed with surgery is multifactorial. It depends upon the difficulty of the operation, how advanced the tumor is in relationship to the blood vessels, it depends upon how healthy the patient is. Uh, a a nine-hour operation can be tolerated by a very healthy patient uh, relatively easily. It will not be tolerated oftentimes in someone of, uh, of advanced age who maybe has one or two uh, heart stents or other um, medical challenges that make a long operation um, uh, uh, perhaps of much higher risk for that patient. And then lastly, we also look at the at how the patient is done from a cancer perspective during the chemotherapy and radiation. Have the tumor markers gone down? Um, has the CT scan gotten a little better? Um, we never, in general, um, uh, apply a high-risk operation to a high-risk patient that has not seemed to respond to chemotherapy and radiation. We make the decision about whether or not surgery is in play before the radiation is started. If we feel that you know surgery just doesn't look to be uh, the right option for this particular patient, oftentimes we can increase the dose of radiation um, and, uh, and try to help uh, prevent the local tumor from growing by increasing the dose of radiation. Even though in the pancreas world we use these these different terms, resectable, borderline resectable, locally advanced A and B, they do match up to the traditional staging system. Uh, and what's most important is that you understand what the goals of therapy are. Are the goals of therapy to eventually remove the tumor? Are the goals of therapy to try to keep the tumors from growing uh, for as long as possible, but, uh, but removing the tumor may not be uh, a, a possibility. Those are the things that hopefully you can glean from careful discussions with your medical team. So thank you for joining me today, and uh, hope I hope you will listen to addition to additional uh, uh, additions of Pancreas School.